Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to look at playing sample instance audio in Allegro 5. So far the videos I've done in part 10 have been building up to this video. In this video we are going to look at sample instances, which give us a greater level of control over the, the audio that we've been playing so far. So what I have on the screen uh, is mostly the same stuff from the last video. I have modified a few things though. Uh, I've added uh, the font and TTF headers because we want to be able to do some writing to the screen. I've created a font object, uh, loaded my font add-ons here, loaded my font, which is just Arial True Type font, and then down here I have uh, destroyed my font. So most of the changes I've made have been re revolving around the font that I added, but I just wanted to point those out. Okay, so just a quick recap. The problem that we're having is that the sounds we want to play uh, take longer than, than the actions that trigger them. So my loop triggers every sixtieth of a second, my sound is, takes a, a tenth of a second, so either they'll stack upon each other uh, if I have multiple audio channels, or I'm forced to only have one audio channel and thus only one sound at a time. Obviously that's not uh, exactly where we want to go. So what we can do is we can introduce this item called a sample instance. And a sample instance builds a stream upon the raw sample data. Uh, it allows us to do some useful manipulation of the sample data and also it's kind of like a wrapper class around it that gives us a lot more functionality. Uh, a great uh, way I could refer to it is uh, considering uh, you know instances are to samples what uh, sprites are to bitmaps. You know the sprite kind of wraps around the bitmap and adds functionality to it. The instance wraps around the sample and adds functionality to it. Uh, so let's just uh, hop right on here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here where I have my, or up here where I have my Allegro sample, and I'm going to create Allegro sample sample instance, and I'm going to call this instance one. It's going to equal null. And so I'm going to come right down to the bottom here, and I'm going to call al destroy sample instance and I will pass it in instance one. Alright, awesome. Okay, so what we need to do with instances is, is, is two things. First, we need to assign some valid sample to it. And second, we need to register it with our mixer. Uh, unlike samples that just automatically go through our mixer, our instances have to be attached to a mixer in order to play. So right here, after my chirp uh, sample is loaded, I am going to call, or I'm going to say instance one equal al create sample instance, and I'm going to pass in my sample data. So let this be sample. Okay. All right. So that's the first step: is we've created our instance, and then what we need to do is we need to attach it to our mixer so that we can play. And so right after that, I'm going to call al attach sample instance, I can't type right now, to mixer. And I'm going to pass in my instance, which is instance one. And then I have to pass in my mixer. Of course, we don't really know what our mixer is. But since we haven't created one, it's a pretty good assumption that we're using the default mixer. So I'm going to go al get default mixer. Remember, the default mixer is created when we call this AL Reserve Samples. That's what creates our mixer uh, object uh, in the background, and so AL Get Default Mixer just grabs that and passes it in here. Awesome. And now I'm going to come down here to where we were playing our sample. Instead, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to call AL Play Sample Instance, and I'm just going to pass in Instance 1. Now you're asking yourself, well, what about all those variables that were in this function that AL play sample? Like the gain, the pan, the speed, the play mode, things like that. Well, with, uh, with, with sample instances, they're just defaults. Um, and so it's going to be a default gain of 1, pan of 0, speed of 1, play mode of 1. Uh, if I want to change any of those, I have to specifically call functions to change those, which uh, we'll look at how to do here in a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it worked. 
But I, I do want to point something out. I haven't actually shown you anything yet because it worked like this before. Remember, we still only have one audio channel. It worked like that with just samples. So let's make it 10 audio channels. This will be the true test. I run it again. Ah, excellent. No echo, right? Uh, so it's working. It's only, since a, a, an instance is a stream of on data sample, um, it can't layer upon itself. It can only play once. Uh, and so we're, we're set there. We're good. Excellent. All right. Great. So we've, we've solved that problem uh, of being able to play, you know, uh, being able to play, you know, over top of itself without getting that, that uh, echo effect. So let's look at what else we can do with these instances here. I created this font so that I can output some data to the screen while we are while we are playing sounds. Uh, some of the things I can do is I can I can tell when a sound is playing. So I can say if al get get sample instance playing. And I call instance one. By the way, this is in the rendering section. If it's playing, I'm going to do al draw text. I'm going to pass in font 18. Then al map RGB 255, 255, 255, 5, 5 for my x and my y locations, 0 for my flag because I just want it to be where, where it is. And I'm going to say, Instance one is playing. Excellent. All right. So if I run this here, now you'll see instance one is playing. I'll stop this way. Great. So we know when audio is playing. Fantastic. So that's that's just one audio at, at a time. Let's look at something we haven't been able to do yet. That's playing multiple audios at the same time. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much just replicate everything I just did. So we're going to have sample, I'll copy this, paste it, make it sample two, and instance one, I'll copy it, paste it, make it instance two. And then I'm going to come down to my destroy functions. And that becomes Instance 2 and sample 2. Awesome. Okay. And I will come back up here and I'm just going to do a lot of copying and pasting here because most of the code is the same. I'm going to say sample 2 equals AL load sample. And this is going to be a new one. Uh, it's called static. It's uh, it's just another thing I used uh, with, or, or I, I made Auda with Audacity using static filters, whatever. Um, it was my quick and quick and dirty explosion sound or whatever. But basically it's just some noise that's kind of grating and that's kind of the point. So I have my static.ogg, uh, which I'm going to load there. And then I'm going to create my instance 2 from my sample 2, just like so. And then I'm going to attach instance 2 to my mixer, like so. And now I can come down here to my update. And inside my update, I'm just going to add a little bounce check in here. We're gonna, basically, I'm going to play my static sound whenever the avatar hits the, the bound of the screen or, or, or goes beyond the bound of the screen. So I'm going to say if x minus 10 is less than 0 or x plus 10 is greater than width or y minus 10 is less than 0 or y plus 10 is greater than height. All right, that means I hit a A border, and I'm going to do al play sample instance instance 2. Awesome. Just like that. And now I'm going to come down here into my rendering. I'm actually just going to copy this here. And so I'm going to say if al get sample instance playing instance 2, so if instance 2 is playing, then I'm going to go ahead and draw instance 2 is playing and I'm going to draw that 2 with minus 5 5 and my flag is going to be 
Allegro line right. And we'll test it out. So this audio still works, and you'll hear. Now I'm leaving myself outside of bounce because this two is playing. This is one. And you'll notice they can play on top of each other. So I'm able to have both sounds playing at the same time. Okay, great. Awesome. So so now we're stacking audio, which is something we haven't been able to do yet. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add one more thing to the mix, one more thing in this video. We're going to add background music to our application, and we're gonna see some more of the power of using instances, sample instances, as opposed to just samples. So I'm gonna come all the way back up here, and I'm gonna do it all again. So I'm gonna copy Allegro sample two, and I'll make it sample three. And instance two will be called instance three. And I'm going to come down to my, my destroy functions. And that's going to become 3 and 3. Great. And now we're going to go back to that original song that I had loaded up in the very first video. I'm going to do sample 3 will equal binary solo.ogg. That's the, the, the song that's by Flight of the Concord. And now I'm going to come down here, I'm going to create my instance. But now with this song, this is going to be our background music. And our background music, we don't want to just play once, we want it to loop. Now I talked about how instances have default values. And the default values for these sample instances is to play only once. So I have to specifically say, I want this sample to be a little bit different. So right here after I create my sample, I'm going to do al set sample instance play mode and I'm going to pass in instance 3 and my play mode is going to be allegro play mode loop so it loops over and over and over again next I need to attach it to my mixer like so there we go and so now we have our instance created, uh, our, our sample created, our instance created based on the sample. Uh, the play mode is set to looping. We've attached it to the mixer. And now right before I start my game loop, I can say al play sample, oops, play sample. Uh, what is this alert type? Instance. And I will pass the instance three. Great. And so now this is going to play looping. And we can see something really cool here. Check this out. What I want to do is I want to output whether or not the sample is playing. So I'm going to copy this code again. Now, if everything's done right, this music will always be playing while this application is running because it started outside of the game loop and it loops uh, infinitely until I were to tell it to stop, but I'm not telling it to stop. So it should loop all the time. But I'm going to say if uh, get or AL get sample instance playing. So if that's if instance 3 is playing, I want to do this. I'm going to draw, actually, text to F. All right. I'm going to draw it to the position 5 and height minus 5. No special alignment. I'm going to leave that at 0. <clears throat> and I'm going to make this say instance 3 is playing. But here's what's cool. Check this out. I'm going to say then percent point one f for... Uh, my floating precision, uh, one decimal place, and then the actual actual percentage sign. Uh, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to be able to tell where I'm at in my playback. So check this out. I'm going to do al get sample instance position. Now the position is going to tell me where in the song I am. Right, and I believe it, I mean it's an unsigned int, but I, I believe it's in seconds. Uh, so the amount of seconds that's passed since the sample started. Uh, but don't don't hold me to that. I believe that's what it is. And so I'm going to pass it instance three. It's going to tell me where I'm at, and I'm going to divide that by. And I'm actually going to type float. This is going to cast it. It's going to force float division as opposed to integer division, since both of these are going to be unsigned ints. If unless I force float division, I'm just going to get zero. Uh, so I'm going to force float division there, I'm going to call it al get 
sample instance length. So I'm taking the, the position and dividing it by the, the total length. So I'm going to get a, the percentage. I'm going to get the percentage of, uh, by timing it, by multiplying by 100, I'll get percentages 1 to 100 as opposed to 0 0.01 to point one or 2 to 1. Um, this is going to make it more human readable. So I'm going to actually going to take the position, divide it by the length, and multiply it by 100, which is going to give me the actual percentage. Like it's 20% of the way done, 30% of the way done, 40% of the way done. Um, and so that's actually, you know, in my opinion, pretty neat. And now before I run it, actually, I notice I have a problem. I'm doing, I'm doing height minus 5, uh, but that's just going to make the, uh, the text appear off screen. So actually, I'm going to do height minus 20. There we go. Now the text will appear on screen. So let me run it now. And we see it's just three playing. And that's our percentage. static sounds. We hit 100%. It loops back around. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful thing. Noticing my uh, percentage mark is showing up here. That must be, there must be some escape character there that I'm forgetting, so I apologize for that. But, uh, yeah, excellent, you know. Uh, so basically we've timed up, or, or we know the, the percentage of the way through the song we are. So we could use that for timing different things for games, things like that, knowing you know, where we at, are, are at with certain sound effects and things like that. And, and I still have, what I set it to, I don't remember how many sound, sound channels I set it to. I set it to... 10, so I, would, I could still potentially play 7 more sounds. Uh, and I know I could do a lot more than that with this sound card, or I don't have a sound card, but with, with the, the onboard audio, I believe I, I've gotten up to 50 sound channels before just messing around, so uh, so yeah, so we got a little bit of room to grow there. We can have a lot of different sound effects and things like that. Alright, but in a nutshell, that is uh, that sound. Uh, we covered uh, sample instances in this video. And there's a lot of really neat things we can do with that. We can start and stop and change playback, change looping, change pan, change gain. We can tell where we're at. We can tell if it's running. Um, so there's just a lot of functionality the sample instances add. Uh, and so that will conclude part 10, uh, our discussion on audio. Uh, so stand by for uh, future videos.